your current situation. Um, for most of you, um, you're probably getting ready for your trials. And then eventually you're getting ready to sit your last ever maths exam, which is super exciting, which is the HSC eventually. Um, I like to think of that as like a really exciting time rather than like a daunting time, like a trying to focus on um, the fact that you have to sit the HSC and more so think about the fact that like you're going to see like all the work you've done for the past two years pay off in that one exam. Um, so that's super fun. Um, this lecture is looking more at um, preparing you for your exams by exposing you to different types of questions for each of the topics. So you can see the topics um, down the bottom. So there's tree, calculus, S plus S stands for sequences and series. Um, then you've got statistics, functions um, as well. So this is all about just exposing you to really common question types um, and some tips and tricks about approaching um, questions in, for maths in general, um, as well as like tips and tricks for looking at specific topics and specific question types. Um, so I guess that's the focus of this lecture rather than focusing on learning the content itself. Um, so it's just more about preparing you for what you'll see and what you should be expecting. Um, so if you want to focus more on the content, um, at the end of these slides, you can download them. There will be um, some extra stuff that focuses on the contents rather than the questions. Um, or you can check out some of the past maths advanced lectures for the HSC um, if you want to focus a little bit more on learning content. Okay, so um, I guess I kind of spoiled it. I already talked about the topics that we're looking at today. But um, the first thing we're going to look at is just a bit um, of the exam structure for sitting your trials and your HSC. Um, so you'll be looking at topics, um, trig, calculus, sequence and series, stats and functions. Um, and then I guess at the end we'll be looking at um, some specific exam tips for studying for maths um, because maths is quite different for most of you from the rest of your subjects. Um, I guess you're doing physics, I guess it's kind of similar to physics, but um, yeah, for most of you, math is a really different sort of approach um, in regards to studying, so we'll talk about that. Um, in today's lecture, we're going to be using real questions um, that have appeared in HSC and trial examinations. So um, it is the sort of thing that you guys should be expecting to see, and if you guys can all um, work through today's questions with me, then we'll be good. Um, there is a chat function in this um, lecture if you guys are watching it live, so feel free to use that. Um, and yeah, we'll just move on to framing the questions um, and I guess looking at questions in HSC maths. So um, I guess it's super obvious, but the first thing you want to do is understand the question. Now, this seems really obvious, but I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. Um, and where a lot of people lose their marks on is just not understanding what the question is actually trying to ask you. So the first thing you want to be looking at is what variables exist um, within your question. Um, you know, like variables in terms of like height, weight, you know, length, sorts of those things. Also, what variables in, um, might come in the form of like X, Y, Z, whatever the letter they want to give you. Um, so what sort of things are changing? Then you want to look at hidden information or like what assumptions um, the people writing the exam want you to know. Um, with this, uh, there's sorts of different sorts of assumptions. Um, so there's like sort of like common sense sort of assumptions that like if they're talking about a deck of cards, they're talking about 52 cards. Um, unless they specify otherwise, if they're talking about a dice, they're talking about your regular six sided dice that has like one, two, three, four, five, six on it. Um, so there's those sorts of assumptions. Then there's also assumptions that they're trying to help you make given the information that they give you. Um, a lot of the time this happens, I guess, in the form of they'll give you like question A, B, C, D. Um, and then it's assumed that you know that to answer part C, you'll need to use what you did in part A or part B. Um, so there's those sorts of assumptions. And I think a lot of the time people forget that like, those questions don't exist in isolation. Um, if it's part A, B, C, usually they have something, at least something to do with each other. Um, so if you're finding it really hard to like answer a question and you're thinking like, 
oh my gosh, like no way they haven't given me the information I needed. Likely they have. They've just made you find it yourself in part B um, or part A or whatever it is. Um, and the other really common place that people miss information, um, and I wouldn't so much to say this is hidden, it's just sort of something that people don't think about so much, is thinking about um, in stimulus information that they give you. So again, this happens really commonly with questions um, where there's like part A, B, C, where it'll be like, you know, say it's question 20 and then they'll give you some stimulus information, like a table of something, um, you know, maybe they give you like a table of Z scores and then there'll be part A and then there'll be part B and then C or D or E or whatever they want to go up to. And people forget that that stimulus information can help you for all those parts of the questions. Um, it's not just for part A. That stimulus might come back and help you for part B. Um, so, yeah, just got to make sure that you're thinking about all the information that they're trying to give you. Um, and then you want to also be thinking about what's your answer going to look like. Now, this is a really um, important step that I think a lot of people don't think about too often. Um, but you want to be thinking about what will my answer look like, you know? So if you've got just like your basic integration question and they're just asking you like intro or something, you're going to end up with a number. Um, it's going to have like X's in it um, or Y or whatever letter they give you. Um, and so that's what your end answer should look like. Um, you know, if you've got like an optimization question, most likely your answer will have units in it. So it'll be like, you know, find the maximum area of, I don't know, this like field. And you know your answer will have to be something meter squared or centimeter squared or, you know, whatever um, they've given you. So thinking about what your answer is going to look like at the end often really helps you think about, okay, so then what do I need to do to get there? And I guess that sort of links us to the second part of approaching questions in maths. And that's to recall anything and everything that you think you might need to get to that final answer. So there's like relationships between concepts, formulas, methods, steps, anything you need to get the final answer. With this, I think thinking about formula is super important. And just remembering what's on your formula sheet. Um, because you don't want to waste your time studying and remembering, trying to remember all these formulas if they're going to be on your formula sheet anyway, because that's just a waste of time. So you want to get really used to using your formula sheet. Um, and I guess along those same lines, you want to think about what formula on that formula sheet am I not going to need at all. Um, you'll see like there's a lot of formulas that have nothing to do with HSC Maths Advanced. They're more for extension one or extension two. So just thinking about like, OK, you know, when I'm looking at page four, don't need any of that of your formula sheet um, on page three. Like when you're looking at. Um, at like your integration and your differentiation formulas thinking about like okay which ones of these don't I need because you don't want to waste time in your exam look flipping through this formula sheet just to waste time because you're thinking looking at things that you've never actually used or never seen before um so yeah just getting super super familiar with using your formula sheet and then I guess the obvious part looking what methods and what steps um do you need to get to the final answer um so that the methods and steps will come from thinking about past questions like you know when i saw a question like this before what did i need to do to get to the answer um and that's how you get your steps to get there um part three i guess is the obvious part solve it um step by step go down the page super important that you set this out um nicely that you are going down the page you're not going like left to right or anything like that um because you want whoever's marking it to be able to really clearly see what you were trying to do. Like you want to be really obvious how you got from this line to the next line to the next line to the next line. When people are marking exams in HSC, like they are trying to give you marks. Like they're not trying to be mean and take things away. Like they're trying to look like, where can we give this person marks? So if you've set your working out nicely, it's really clearly um, visible to them of what you're trying to do and it helps them um, think about like, okay, we can give marks for this because they've shown what they're trying to do here. And then finally, the fourth step is to check. Um, this is where I think if you're not doing this, you might start to lose those little marks here and there because you don't notice that you've, um, you know, like written down the wrong formula or that you don't notice that little miscalculation. So super important that you go through and you check just to make sure that those little things are right. 
Um, yeah, I think it's just like a lot of people don't check. They feel confident with their answer and then they just never go back and look at it. But, you know, they've accidentally written down like a plus instead of a minus. And then all of a sudden everything after that line of working is wrong. So just going back and checking for those little things can be so good in helping you get um, those extra marks. So, um, yeah, just like making sure you do that and then looking for like those slight miscalculations. I know like when you're in an exam, it can be super stressful. Um, and, you know, if you're not thinking properly, you know, you might actually write down like four plus seven is equal to 12 instead of 11. Um, so those sorts of things um, are the sorts of things that you want to be going through when you're checking. Now, when you're checking your answers, this might not happen straight after you do the question. Um, if you know you're a bit short on time, then you want to go through, answer all the questions and then come back and check. But hopefully all of you guys should be working towards at least having some time at the end of your exam to go through um, and check for um, those sorts of little mistakes that you might have made. Um, so I would next want to talk a little bit about summaries. Um, if you haven't started writing your summaries yet, don't panic, don't fear. Um, it's never too late. Um, you just want to be thinking about writing summaries for each of like the topics you learn. So each of like your new formulas, um, each of like your new like concepts, you want to be just sort of trying to think about like what theory sort of is relevant for that. And like, what theory am I going to need to look back on? So you, anytime you're doing a summary, you're thinking about what am I going to want to look back on and still remember or like still be thinking about? Um, and then you want to be including a worked example. These things are so good because if you forget how to do a question and you've got your summary, you can go back and look at like, oh, like I've got a worked example for this question, this sort of question type. And this is how I need to answer that question. So super, super good things to go back and look on. Um, but like I said, if you haven't started, why not start now? Um, so like I said before, this lecture is a lot about question types um, for each of your topics. So follow me with the, um, throughout the lecture um, and you can start writing down some of your worked examples for your super important concepts. Because um, there'll be heaps of questions um, in this uh, lecture that you'll see um, are really similar to the questions you get in your trials or your HSE. So if you've got an example to look back on, you'll be um, able to answer those questions with ease. Okay, so the next little part of our overview is just looking at the hierarchical map, which I guess is just a way to think about your math syllabus. So when you've got your hierarchical map, each time you go down, you're getting more and more specific, right? So, you know, calculus is your broad topic differentiation within that is like you know your first sort of specification then within that you've got the product rule which is again like another specification of a type of differentiation and then you've got another specification of the cross method solution for the product rule so when you're looking at the hierarchical map the further you get down the more likely it is that that's sort of what your questions are going to be targeting so what i mean by that is like when you've got calculus, like your questions in your exams aren't going to target like calculus as a whole. They're more so going to look at the product rule or the cross method solution, right? So the more you go down, the more specific something is, the easier it is for um, people to write exam questions on those solutions. So when you're looking through um, the syllabus when you're studying, you want to be thinking about, can I answer each of the specific points within the syllabus? Oh, like, could I answer a question using the product rule, for example? Um, and that'll help you make sure that you're super ready to sit those exams and you're ready for all the different types of questions that they might ask you. Um, because I guess going into your exam, you want to be absolutely as ready as possible um, as you could possibly be. So just making sure you can look at all those specific points of the syllabus as you go down the hierarchy of the map um, will really help you just be focused and ready to go into that exam. Okay, so I guess the next thing we're just going to quickly talk about is the logistics of doing um, a maths exam, a three hour maths exam. Um, so for most of you, your first three hour maths exam will be your trial. Um, and that can be super, super daunting, but like I promise you, it's not that bad. 
um like I feel like once you get into the exam and you're sitting in your exam room like you sort of forget that it's three hours like you just work through the questions and like all of a sudden you've only got like 20 minutes left you know um so yeah it's a three-hour exam you do get 10 minutes of reading time at the very beginning um reading time in maths I think is quite different to other subjects um because it's not like you're thinking about I guess like what content you need to include in each of your questions you're sort of just reading those questions to get a bit of an understanding about like um how difficult the questions are going to be um and I think that's probably the best way you can use your reading time is to think about like which questions are going to be the most difficult for me and if you're thinking about you know there's maybe five questions that you think you're going to find really difficult you need to make sure that you're allocating yourself enough time and a bit of extra time to be able to answer those questions and you know you'll also read through and you'll be like oh like this is a pretty easy question for some of them and you think to yourself okay i won't need to spend as much time doing that um so yeah just using that reading time to think about difficulty of questions and planning how you're going to attack that paper um so your three hour exam is 100 marks um so that's pretty stock standard for a two unit um, exam in the HSC um, so that's nothing new and then uh, this is the part that I feel like scares a lot of people um, 30% of your exam does come from year 11 content now I think a lot of people get really scared about this and think that they have to go and revise all of the year 11 content but let me tell you that's not the case um, you want to be checking out some of the year 11 lectures um, they're not too long and looking at those lectures will help you um, just get like a broad picture of what you want to be um, remembering from year 11 but you don't want to spend too much time focusing on that year 11 stuff because all in all 70% of your exam is still year 12 um, and with that year 11 content I think a lot of people forget that um, a lot of that content you come back to in year 12 you know like I think sometimes people forget that like different the first time you do differentiation is in year 11 so that's considered like year 11 content right so it's not stuff that you're not going to have looked at since you did in year 11. It's not going to be that super random, you know, really niche topic that, you know, they ask you about like once um, in one exam in year 11, right? They're going to be looking at what stuff from year 11 is relevant to the stuff we're also assessing in year 12, okay? So don't stress about that stuff. Don't want to spend too much time looking at your year 11 content um, because more of your marks are coming from year 12, right? Um, so this is the sort of thing that you'll see on the front of your exam. Um, it's the same for every um, maths exam that you see it. Um, it's just giving you like the breakdown of the marks. So you've got 20, um, sorry, 10 marks for multiple choice. Um, questions one through 10. Um, with these questions, um, usually questions one to seven or so um, are pretty um, stock standard maths questions. They're just like applying a formula, um, you know, recalling a rule, you know, sorts of simple maths um, questions. And then usually it's around question eight, nine, ten that they start to become a little bit more um, questions that you've got to think a little bit more about. Um, and not to say that they're too tricky or anything, um, like I think they are still very answerable questions. They just require a little bit more thought to go into them. Um, and then the bulk of your paper, so the other 90 marks, are your short answer questions. Most of them do have multiple parts. So it'll be like, you know, question 11A, 11B, 11C, um, and you know, like 12A, 12B, 12C, 12D. Um, so they are super like related to each other. Um, you don't get too many questions, I guess, that exist in isolation. Like you do get a few, but not too many. Um, and as you go through the paper, your questions typically increase in difficulty. Um, so, you know, question 11, which will be the first question, short answer question after your multiple choice, is usually fairly um, simple um, short answer question. And then your last question is typically the hardest question um, in the paper. So that's typically, um, you know, if you're really familiar with whatever they're trying to assess as the last question, you might find the last question super easy. Or, you know, if you're not as familiar with um, what they're trying to assess in question 11, then, you know, maybe that'll be a bit harder. But in general, they are designed to get harder as you go through. Um, 
So you don't want to be sort of thinking about that when you're thinking about, I guess, um, how you're going to approach the paper. Like if you're going to spend more time in the second half of the paper um, than the first half, because like your time is not going to be split up proportionately. Um, so you just want to keep that in mind, I guess, when you're thinking about how you're going to approach your paper. But anyway, um, so this is, I guess, the overview of um, the topics in HC Maths. Pretty chill, pretty relaxed. Um, you've got functions and within that comes like your graphing. You've got trigonometric functions, which comes um, trigonometric functions and graphs. Calculus is sort of your biggest bit here because within that you've got differentiation, applications of differentiation and integration. Um, and this will form a lot of your paper comes from calculus. Um, then you've got financial math, which is about modeling financial situations. Um, something to note is that this is also where your sequences and series come in. Um, I think sometimes people forget that sequences and series exist because they're not like specifically outlined here, but they are part of financial maths. And then the last little bit is you've got statistical analysis. So you've got your descriptive statistics um, and bivariate data analysis, and then you've got random variables. Um, so yeah, that's like an overview of the topics we're gonna be looking at today. You can see them down the bottom as well.